Hello, and welcome back to another review on Foose Entertainment. Just got done watching this movie. And the film I will be reviewing tonight is The Conjuring 2. The long awaited sequel to 2013's original, The Conjuring. Which, like this, is based off of a real story, something that actually happened. I would say that this is the, f the franchise that this gets better and better with each installment. This one, um, in my opinion, tops The Conjuring as well as Annabelle. It's a lot scarier, a lot more serious. I have to say that uh, revisiting these films actually has made me respect them a whole lot more. This one has a lot of motion in it too, which I thought was very cool. Well, let's go on to the premise of the story. Um, this one's a little different from the first Conjuring. The first Conjuring was mostly just um, a haunting that led into possession. While this one actually is mostly about possession, not really a haunting of a house. It has a lot more um, story, because there's a bunch of stories kind of coming together in one full circle. Basically, um, the rain it was uh, our lead female, played again by, let's see if I can pronounce her name right this time, played again by um, Vera Formiga, or Miga, still can't pronounce her name right. <laughs> uh, it starts out with um, the conclusion of the Annie Bell Holder, in which um, Edlin Lorraine Warren had a lot to do with that um, historic haunting as well in history, 1976, I believe. Um, <coughs> during that case, she um, had a disturbing interaction with um, Valak, who is a um, real-life demonic demon that takes the shape of a old nun from, I believe, the 1930s or 40s or possibly 50s. I will get back to you on that probably next year when I actually re review The Nun, which is the next film in the Conjuring universe, which comes out in September 2018. And they take a break, and then um, in England, actually in the, U in the UK, a um, family is um, having a problems with their uh, daughter. It's really a single mom and um, three young children. When a teenager um, born, I say, late junior high, and um, a little kid, um, a boy, I would say, um, middle of elementary school in the daughter who is being possessed and being forced to do demonic things who I say is about 12 or 13 and well the authorities don't believe what's going on because of the controversy of the Annieville holder and um, eventually it catches the attention of the Warrens so Ed and Lorraine Warren um, get involved. They go to the UK and um, try to help the family. And then this demon, who at the time, when they're in England, they don't know this, actually related to the events of the Annie Vilhuller, um, basically uh, is toying with the um, realists in the movie playing a game of making it appear that the young child is actually making it all up and faking the demonic possession. 
and so on. And then um, a lot of very interesting intelligence in this movie that leads Ed to finding out that there's a lot more going on deep underneath it all. And so it, it comes to a climatic end that is very shocking and very um, adventurous and very, very chilling and thrilling to where they help the family. And it kind of leads into the next film um, that will be coming out in September, which is The Nun by um, having us understand the name of the um, demonic demon known as Valak. This film is very thrilling. It's the best one in the series so far. I got to, I gotta say, it, these films just get better and better and better. It's like um, it's a universe that just expands with um, so much more with each film. And that's certainly the case with The Conjuring 2. Now let's go on to the picture quality. This one is presented in 235 by one wide. And I know that they always say 240 by one wide, but it's pretty much the same thing. Of course, all the films in this universe are all presented in the same millimeter of 235 by one wide, which is a cinematic widescreen mode, which allows you to do a whole lot more, like I said in previous reviews, than um, a 178 or 185 by one wide frame, which you have to film things close up, which is actually what this camera, which I review on, is. It's a 178 by one wide frame camera. 235 by one wide frames, frames are a whole lot wider and you can see a whole lot more, which is why they use that in movies. <laughs> um, the cinematography in this one, I say is more cool temperatured then um, it is warm and um, neutral. But it really brilliantly plays out real well in the, throughout the film. It kind of gets to, um, a, I think that I think the um, idea behind having it being more cooler temperature than warm and, and neutral is to um, do two things. This film um, takes place during winter, around the Christmas season. While I say the the previous film, I say, takes place during um, spring or summer, and The Conjuring takes place during the fall. So this one takes place during the winter, so it kind of like a seasonal thing. But I also think that it kind of just plays into um, the film itself, which I kind of like with the whole mood of the movie. And of course, it still has that um, 1970s feel to it, which I definitely like about these movies, is the fact that they have a 1970s feel. It kind of makes you wonder what um, The Nun's going to be like when that comes out in theaters in September 2018. That one actually might have um, a different look altogether because it takes place in a different time period in the 1970s, like all the films, including this one. One um, in the next one, which all take place in the 1970s. Although technically, I would say Annabelle Creation, now I think about it, takes place in the 1960s. Like I said, I'll um, get more into that when I review Annabelle Cre Creation, which I'll probably do tomorrow, or um, sometime later within the week, because I do work a lot. Now let's go on to the audio. This is the first one to be presented in Dolby Atmos. Now, um, it used to have an Onkyo 7.1 Dolby Atmos receiver, but it did uh, fell on me, which is why I like Yamaha a whole lot more. But the cool thing about Dolby Atmos is that you can get all of the very high quality of the sound off of Adobe True HD decoder. And um, what it does when you play it through that, um, brand of sound is um, it just adds a lot more intensity and a lot more effects and dramaticness to the sound without you know having overhead but at times you can sort of get like a virtual overhead height um, acoustic feel with it without actually having overhead speakers now do I prefer having overhead speakers Yes, I do. And maybe sometime in the future I will um, be getting a whole new Dolby Atmos and DTSX decoder 
and um, receiver. So I can go ahead and hook up two more speakers in this room to review movies on. Um, again, this the sound got pushed up a lot too because of Dolby Atmos um, decosion. And um, you can really hear it in this one. It's much more dramatic. Um, at times, it gets pretty loud and crazy with the sound, especially in this movie with rain effects, um, music scores. Um, I even jumped um, towards the end of this movie a little bit because uh, um, where I sit, I have these rounds on both sides of my body, like right here and there, going into each other, which is the way you're supposed to have it. Um, and uh, yeah, some of it was pretty, pretty. <laughs> so uh, yeah, very, very good sound in this movie. And um, all I gotta say is. The emotion in this movie is pretty good. There's a lot of romance between the two leads, um, Ed and uh, Lorraine Warren. There's a lot of heart in this movie um, with how they relate to the British family that they're helping. And um, you can really feel a whole lot from the characterization of the characters in the film. Which you, you have in the previous two films before this one, but it kind of got upped on this one. So this is pushing it forward to making a much bigger movie than the previous films. Um, I don't remember Annabelle Creation being as good as the previous two films as well as this one, but I, my opinion might actually change after I watch it again, which I believe will be for the uh, second or third time as well. I always try to watch these movies when I'm not all that tired, that way I can really give a really good review on them which uh, is the case with The Conjuring Part 2, as well as the previous two films. That's the cool thing about me. You always will know that I just got done watching the movie before sitting down in front of you and talking about it. Um, that's pretty much all there is to say about The Conjuring Part 2. Did you like the movie? Did you not like the movie? Do you like this review? Do you not like this review? I've actually been told by um, certain people that I should act towards the camera. So if you see, I'm looking directly at you and talking directly to you this time around, which is a little different. Um, but we'll see how that plays out. As always, um, subscribe if you want. Press a like or dislike, comment below. I could say uh, this Conjuring universe that I'm reviewing actually has gotten some really cool attention to um, a British reviewer in the UK. He um, reviews horror films as well as events, and um, I will say I appreciate your comment. Thank you for um, saying that you like The Conjuring. I like it when I get to read comments on these videos, whether I'm singing in front of um, people or singing at home in the studio, or doing this, which is reviewing movies. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that's um, all there is to say. Tonight, I will be reviewing Annabelle Creation um, soon. Well, hope you guys have a pleasant evening or morning. And I will see you next time.